Welcome back. Well, uh, the Nifty has managed to put on a whole hundred once again. So the markets are trying to move away from the the early morning slump that it had, and now it's practically at the highs of the session. So not bad. By the way, BPCL is taking flight once again. Stocks up about three, three and a half percent, and technology continues to be the strongest spot. We've been maintaining that. So TCS, for instance, is still retaining those gains. Wipro is up about, up about three uh, percent as well. Let's get that conversation going then with the Bhavan Shah of uh, Samiksha Capital. Bhavan, thank you very much for joining in. You know, we're looking at uh, all these technology stocks flying high. And I just want to tell our viewers that, of course, you made a huge career in analyzing, uh, you know, big, big tech trends and tech firms in India and in Asia. So let me actually just start there a bit. Uh, what is the view that you're taking on uh, both large cap and mid cap tech over here at the end of the third quarter? I mean, stocks have moved a lot more than... Uh, say management commentary or actual earnings numbers. Uh, what is your stance on tech? Uh, I just give us some color on uh, how you would be positioned. I mean, I think the uh, you know part of the move might be related to what has happened to valuations in other sectors uh, of Indian market, and so I think uh, relatively uh, IT uh, continues to look uh, attractive. I think those are companies generating huge cash flows and also paying them. Uh, you know, uh, through buybacks and dividends, and also the, and I think when we look at things like uh, you know cash flow yield and payout ratios, this company, this group of companies continue to uh, stand out. You know, especially when you had you know this big rally in other other segments. Now, as far as the business fundamentals are concerned, I mean, I think the uh, it seems like uh, with uh, a little bit more uh, positive view of the you know the, the Western economies. Uh, uh, there will be more optimism about uh, the IT spends, and uh, I think underlying trend of uh, you know obviously the stronger activity levels for the Indian IT companies you know overall continues to be in place, and that I think is uh, maybe uh, driving the market. But we want to be a little you know cautious, especially not chasing uh, super expensive stocks because I think what happens is that you know those stocks are primed for a sharp correction whenever. You know, maybe the company is not able to meet uh, any, you know, any of those expectations. So I think we, we continue to be selective, very selective. But, you know, I think, uh, you know, if you do that, there, there's still some uh, pockets of opportunities. Mm. Uh, let me talk about one of your big bets, and that's Interglobe Aviation. Uh, now, a lot of people shied away from holding aviation companies due to very high ATF and, you know, the fuel costs that they have to pay, the taxation involved. Uh, but you've been betting on Interglobe Aviation, and now with the sudden rise that we've seen, this consistent rise that we've seen in you know travel and tourism, Interglobe Aviation has taken flight. Uh, now tell us from here on, you know the company has reported good financials, but how confident are you about Interglobe Aviation's performance, financials, and valuations from the current level? So I think the industry structure is the most important thing we have to uh, keep in mind. Industry structure is of you know integral aviation controlling more than 60% of the market followed by you know the air india group uh, having another 25% or you know i think that sort of industry structure is unheard of unprecedented uh, anywhere in the world for a market large market of, of the size like india and so i think nobody has a template to analyze aviation in that context you know all the templates you look at past data you know, I have to be thrown out of the window. And this sector has to be looked at very differently, in my view. Uh, you know, on top of that, you know, here is an airline which has, you know, uh, you know, based in class cost structure, uh, and you know, a clear focus on being a low cost, uh, efficient carrier. Who based, and I think, uh, and I think, and also very strategic about the way uh, they acquire aircraft and the way uh, they, uh, you know, look at a lot of aspects of the business. And I think the delivery has been pretty consistent. I mean, I think company dealt with COVID in a very, uh, you, know, you know, I mean, efficient way. I mean, they, uh, and today the competitor, the, the, their direct competitor, Air India, obviously, you know, has a work cut out for them. I mean, obviously it's in the hands of Tata Group. So they are going to uh, try to build that business, uh, you know, in, a, in the right way from a long-term vision. And in that process, you know, we don't expect uh, Air India uh, to come and you know basically start to compete on price, you know I think, and that I think is a uh, also a departure from 
uh, what Interglobe Aviation faced uh, in the past, when uh, while they were the lowest cost carrier in India, uh, you know they faced the price competition from the likes of the Spice Z or Kingfisher or you know Deccan or uh, you know whoever. And obviously, all those competitors got hurt more uh, trying to compete on price with Indigo. Uh, but obviously, it also suppressed uh, some of the profits that Indigo Interglobe Aviation could show in the past. And now with this uh, structure. I think you know the trajectory for them to report very strong profits. I think is much more clear. Obviously, airline industry is subject to many uh, turbulences. Uh, you know, ATF. Uh, you know, the crude crude price, and you know many other factors can affect. Uh, you know, obviously economic crisis. And all those things hit airlines pretty hard. So we have to be aware of that. But uh, long term trajectory, given the demand for aviation in India, given the focus of the government in building the airport infrastructure. By the way. India is far ahead of China in building the you know airport infrastructure at this stage of development of our economy. If you look go back and look at what how many airports China had at this level of GDP per capita, it was far fewer. So I think there is also very strong infrastructure support from the government to boost this industry. So all in all, I think it's a you know it's a very good place to be. And I think uh, while the stock has had some run, but I think there is still a lot of uh, room left to. You know, deliver you know uh, pretty decent mid-teens kind of returns from here onwards on a long-term basis. Okay, all right, uh, Bhavan, we'll leave it on that note for today. Thank you very much for uh, joining in. Good chatting with you and getting some perspective there. Well, uh, we'll uh, take a break on that note. Come back on the other side and uh, get you more on the markets. Uh, the Nifty uh, holding on to that gain of about a hundred odd points at least for the time being. Back in a moment. <laughs>